Academic Writing Lecture 11 The Department of Foreign Language Two Foreign Languages Lecturer Shnar Nurmanova The theme of the lecture is Adjective Clauses The objectives of the lecture are to define adjective clauses, to identify functions of adjective clauses, to specify essential, non-essential adjective clauses, to clarify the components of an adjective clause, to identify questions related to adjective clauses. The plan of the lecture. The first, adjective clauses. The second, functions of adjective clauses. Three, essential, non-essential adjective clauses. Four, components of an adjective clause. And the fifth, questions related to adjective clauses. So, adjective clauses are also known as relative clauses. So, adjective clause is a type of dependent clause that works to describe a noun in a sentence. In functions as an objective, adjective, even though it is made up of a group of words instead of just one word. In the case of an adjective clause, all the words work together to modify the noun or pronoun. An adjective clause is a multi-word adjective that includes a subject and a verb. When we think of an adjective, we usually think about a single word used before a noun to modify its meanings. For example, tall building, smelly, argumentative assistant, etc. However, an adjective can also come in, in the form of an adjective clause. An adjective clause usually comes after the noun it modifies and is made up of several words which like all clauses will include a subject and a verb. Adjective clauses are dependent. All adjective clauses are dependent clauses. A dependent clause is a group of words that consists of a subject and a verb. Yet it is not a complete sentence that can stand alone. <clears throat> adjective clauses begin with a relative pronoun which connects them to the word they describe such as that, where, when, who, whom, whose, which, why. Once you remember the relative pronoun, it's very easy to pick out an adjective clause in a sentence. For example, chocolate, which many people adore, is fattening. People who are smart to follow the rules are smart. I can remember the time when cell phones didn't exist. When the cell phone didn't exist. Here is an adjective clause. Charlie had a friend whose daughter lives in China. Whose daughter lives in China. The wine that winters produce in Tuscany is not cheap. The reason why Sandra went to law school is that she didn't want to be a doctor. Notice that each of the adjective clauses begin with a relative pronoun from the list above. This connects it to the noun being described, which comes directly before the relative pronoun in the sentence. Each adjective clause above also contains a subject and a verb, all of which work together to describe the original noun being modified. For example, the clause which many people adore contains the subject people and the verb adore yet by itself is not a complete sentence. Instead, its job is to provide more information to describe the noun chocolate. In some cases, the relative pronoun also serves as the subject of the clause. For example, if the adjective clause who are smart, the relative pronoun who also acts as the subject is that is smart. With relative pronouns, an adjective clause generally begins with a relative pronoun that, which, whom, whose, that connects the clause to the noun or pronoun it modifies. The relative pronoun shows the relationship between the clause and the antecedent. There is a mountain that we are going to climb, antecedent mountain, that connects the clause we are going to climb that with the antecedent. My blue tennis shoes, which used to be my mom's, 
were under the bed, antecedent shoes, which is a pronoun replacing shoes in the dependent clause. Shoes used to be my mom's and relating to the subject of the independent clause. Daniel, who is late again today, sits next to me in English, antecedent Daniel. Who? Daniel. So the, de the dependent clause means Daniel was late again today. Who is replacing Daniel in the second clause and relating it to the subject of the independent clause? The relative, relative pronoun has a grammatical function in the sentence. There is a mountain that we are going to climb. That is the direct object of the infinitive to climb. My blue tennis shirt, shoes, which used to be my mom's, were under the bed, which here is the subject of the verb used. And Daniel, who is late again today, sits next to me in English, who is the subject of the dependent clause. So the hint is, when choosing between who and whom, considerably, consider how the pronoun is used in the dependent clause, not the independent clause. These are the students who are going. Who is the subject of the dependent clause? There are the students who are going. They are going. Those are the students for whom I bought the tickets. Whom is the object of the preposition for? Those are the students. I bought the tickets for whom? I bought the tickets for them. With understood pronouns, sometimes the relative pronoun is understood and not written in the sentence. Have you seen the book I lost? Have you seen the book that I lost? The teacher I had in fifth grade really inspired me. The teacher whom I had in fifth grade generally inspired me. With prepositions, if the relative pronoun is the object of a preposition and is left out, the preposition has no choice but to dangle. In informal spoken English, this is fine. It is also fine in spoken English to end the clause with a preposition. However, in formal English it is better to put the preposition before the pronoun. Note that the preposition is part of the dependent clause. With relative adverbs, adjective clauses can also start with the relative adverbs where, when, why. They connect, uh, connect the dependent clause to a noun in the sentence. The relative adverb modifies the verb in the dependent clause. For example, that is the bench where you and I were supposed to meet. Six o'clock was the time when we were supposed to be here. That is the reason why I couldn't meet you. So essential, non-essential clauses. Sometimes the inf information included in an adjective clause is very important to the meaning of the sentence. For cases in which the sentence wouldn't hold the same meaning without the clause, the adjective clause is called an essential clause. For example, I don't like children who eat ice cream with their hands. In this case, the adjective clause gives essential information to describe the children. If you got rid of that clause, the tense sentence would simply say, I don't like children, which is very different from not liking messy children who eat with their hands. An essential adjective clause does not require any additional punctuation. A non-essential adjective clause, on the other hand, gives extra description that is not strictly required to understand the writer's intent. For example, the kitten was the smallest of the litter, finally found a foster home. In this case, the adjective clause gives extra information but isn't necessary to get the gist of the sentence about the cat finding a home. Non-essential adjective clauses are set off with commas to show that they, they aren't strongly connected to the rest of the sentence. Adjective clauses in use. So there are more examples of adjective clauses. And for example, the dog that I bought, brought home from the pound was soon fast asleep. The time will come when you feel sorry for the, for the things you've done. A smart teenager whose parents are my neighbors, went to a prestigious college, etc. Adjective clauses add detail. Adding adjective clauses to your writing is a good way to provide additional detail about the noun and pronouns in your work. This extra description will enrich your writing and help the reader understand your message more clearly. And 
When you know the relative pronouns and how to distinguish between essential and non-essential clauses, you'll have no trouble identifying adjective clauses and punctuating them correctly in your writing. So examples of adjective clauses. So the carpets you bought last year were rotted. The follies with a man regrets most in his life are those which he didn't commit when he had the opportunity. So concerning the components of adjective clauses. So an adjective clause, also called a relative clause, will have the following three traits. The first trait, it will start with a relative pronoun who, whom, whose, that or which, or a relative adverb when, where or why. This links it to the noun it is modifying. Note, quite often the relative pronouns can be omitted. However, with an adjective clause, it is always possible to put one in. There is more on this below. Trait 2. I will have a subject and a verb. These are what make it a clause. Trait 3. It will tell us something about the noun. This is why it is a kind of adjective. Quite often the relative pronoun is the subject of the clause. And examples. The relative pronoun can be omitted. It is common for the relative pronoun to be omitted. For example, the carpets, the word which is omitted here, the carpets you bought last year have gone moldy. The film which you recommended scared the kids half to death. The film you recommended scared the kids half to death. So, and when the adjective clause starts with a relative adverb, when, where or why, the relative adverb cannot be omitted. For example, I don't remember a time when words were not dangerous. You can often omit a relative pronoun, but you can't omit a relative adverb. Why should I care about adjective clauses? There are two common questions related to adjective clauses. The first, should I use a comma before which? This is the by far the most common question related to adjective clauses. The answer applies to all adjective clauses, not just those that start with which. So, do you offset an adjective clause with commas or not? The answer is sometimes yes and sometimes no. The rule is this. Don't use commas if your clause is essential. It is required to identify its noun. This is called a restrictive clause. Do use commas if your clause is just additional information. This is called a non-restrictive clause. Here is an example of restrictive and non-restrictive sentences. For example, non-restrictive. My brother, who claimed to have a limp, sprinted after the bus. This clause is not required to identify my brother. It is just additional information. And restrictive clause. The tramp who claimed to have a limp sprinted after the bus. This clause is required to identify the tramp. Without it, we don't know which tramp we are talking about. And the second question. What is the difference between that and which? Which and that are inter interchangeable, provided we are talking about which without a comma. When which starts uh, a restrictive clause, clause not offset with commas, you can replace it with that. In fact, Americans will insist you use that instead of which for a restrictive clause. For many, even Brits, that sounds more natural with a restrictive clause, and this is something we can use. If all this talk of restrictive and non-restrictive clauses is confusing, try replacing your which with that. If your sentence will so still sounds good, you almost certainly want which uh, without comma. The strict works because that you can be uh, uh, can use with a restrictive clause and whether you can consciously know it or no, not some language processing area. Well, and key points. Don't use comma here. Examples and it is the clause is just additional information. This is called non. So, if you happily delete your clause, then not a restrictive clause. 
it shouldn't offset with commas. Don't start a restrictive clause with which if you are American or writing Americans. Use that instead. Use who, not that for people. Who is a bit sharper. So an adjective clause is a clause that works to describe, modify a noun, a pronoun. It will be a subordinate clause. It appears immediately after the word to describe modifies. Adjective clauses always begin with either a pronoun or an adverb. Pronouns who, which, that, whom, whose, adverbs, why, where, when. Adjective clauses answer questions that begin with which, who, when, or what kind. An adjective clause must have two parts that every clause has. A subject, what the clause is about, and a verb, what the subject is doing. The subject of an adjective clause depends on whether it begins with a pronoun or an adverb. Adjective clause beginning with a pronoun. When an adjective clause begins with a pronoun, the pronoun is the subject of the clause. And revision questions. What is the role of adjective clause? What is the function of adjective clauses? What are essential and non-essential adjective clauses? What are the components of an adjective clause? And what questions are related to adjective clauses? While getting for the lecture, so use the following sources. Alice Oshima and Hoke, Writing Academic English and